Good morning, Shanghai. Shanghai is a city of scholarship, a city of learning. Shanghai has been a window to the West. It is the city in which my country and yours issued the communique that began our modern friendship. It is the city where the Yangtze meets the East China Sea, which itself becomes the Pacific, which touches our shores. The Yangtze is a swift and turbulent river, one of the great rivers of the world. Over a decade ago, an overseas TV station interviewed me for informing them about the uniqueness of Shanghai. I was told to describe the city from its past, present, and future within five minutes. Though a nearly impossible feat to discuss this great city in such a short amount of time. The uniqueness of Shanghai, which has had more nicknames than any other cities in the world, names such as Adventure's Paradise, Paris of the Orient, New York in the East, the greatest city of the Far East, and the Demon Capital, are only a few. Shanghai, the two Chinese characters together meaning "up on the sea," or another way of the literary translation of Shanghai means "go to the sea," with "shang" translated to mean "go to." And high translated to mean sea. According to the archaeologists, Shanghai's history can be traced back to over 4,000 years ago. Over 180 years ago, Shanghai used to be a tiny fishing village. So back then, Shanghai landers would go to sea to fish. Shanghai also has an officially abbreviated name in Chinese called Hu, which is a type of fishing net. Today. Shanghai is the fattest changing sector in the city skyline. It has become an international metropolitan. If we combine the international metropolitan concept with the fishing net, we have the internet. This net now only catches the different kind of fish. Unlike the past, where Shanghai had nicknames that drew comparisons to other big cities, it is now a staple of its own. Cities like Ashfield in Sydney and Flushing in New York. Already draws comparisons to the real Shanghai with nicknames such as Little Shanghai to attribute to their individual growth. Now we're viewing the Shanghai skylines for both the east and the west banks of Huangpu River. We have witnessed the changing of the skyline of the east bank of Huangpu River from rice paddy field to numerous skyscrapers since 1990. The city's rapid modernization casts a brightness picture over the new Asia Wall Street. Suddenly, skyscrapers are to arise at a hungry speed that are spring up all over the city. The east bank is a newly developed, renowned for its Lu Jiazui skyline, where is the home offices of top 500 companies in the world and the major financial organizations and banks. All the architectural firms have been trying extremely hard to create city icons by using their innovation ideas. It looks that newly created Eiffel Tower, Chrysler Building, and Trans American Pyramid are all in one place, but they do become the icon of the city. People give fun names of the three giants as. Jinmao Building, Injector, Shanghai World Financial Center, Massive Bottle Opener, Shanghai Center Tower, the tallest building, Egg Beater. With less disagreement of Shanghai Center Tower as the symbol of Rising Dragon, Shanghai World Financial Center's design had a lot of debates. According to ancient Chinese mythology, the earth was square and heaven was round. The trapezoid part on top of the building was designed as a circle, but some patrons' imagination was more creative than the designers. Those patrons thought the circle upon the tower was too much like Japanese Empire flag. If you have not been to Shanghai yet, we would like to recommend to watch two movies: Mission Impossible Three to view the Shanghai skyscrapers. Tom Cruise jumped from building to building and made his spectacular leap from the 88-story Jinmao Tower and landed on the west side of the river near Yang'an Highway, about a mile away. Shanghai Calling is another movie casted in Shanghai for Lu Jiazui and the Bond Street sceneries. Along the west bank, which called the Bond, there were almost 40 buildings were built in early 1920s or 30s. It consists of various buildings of different architectural style. Including Gothic, Baroque, Romanesque, Renaissance, Classicism, and Neoclassic. The Bund, used to be called the former Wall Street of Asia, had enjoyed its glorious time. 
Its buildings also told the tales of the period of demon capital since early 1920s to 40th. The most famous historical landmark is Hong Kong and Shanghai Banking Corporation Building. Now is the home of Shanghai Pudong Development Bank, which still dominates the bond. In the bank opening ceremony on June 23, 1923, Sir Ronald Macleay, Her Majesty Minister, delivered a speech that reality has outrun anticipation, and that this magnificent building not only surpasses the great achievements which the skill of architects, the nobility of the dimensions, the beauty of its decorations. The symmetry of its proportions and the elegance of its appointments is unsurpassed by any financial or commercial house in Asia and the Far East, from Suez to the Bering Sea. The Custom House was erected in 1927, replacing a Tudor-style building with a clock tower. The clock was regarded as the most accurate public timepiece in the city. Another remarkable building with green rooftop is formerly called Cathay Hotel, which was created by legendary figure Sir Victor Sassoon, who always hosted most of the best parties in the ballroom and on the rooftop. Now with the head of Fairmont Peace Hotel, which was opened in August 1929, up to its epithet at the grandiose ridges of the Far East, the opening of the Cathay Hotel heralded a new era for Shanghai, and indeed Far Eastern hotels, a peace setter brimming with the latest amenities and luxuries and a monument to the marriage of art and technology. A gorgeous riverfront promenade of the Bund, with a spectacle striking view of the East Bank, makes a great spot for photograph. Shanghai has a unique oriental charm blended with Western flavor. The river cruise tour on Huangpu River is the best way to admire Shanghai's modern skyscrapers and a classic skyline view of colonial architecture. Huangpu River empties into Yangtze River and finally flows into Pacific Ocean and touches the other side show. We would like highly recommend to take a night cruise when the river is veiled in a dramatic illumination with newly developed LED lights. There is a saying, if New York never sleeps, Shanghai even never doze off. Being a never nice city, Shanghai's dynamic life just begins when the lights are on. During the night, flashing neon signs illuminate the magnificent buildings and spangle the night skyline of this lively city. Now Nanjing Pedestrian Street sets an exemplary model for Asia's shopping scene. You will find over 600 businesses on the street offer countless famous brands with superior quality. It has the reputation as China's Fifth Avenue, acknowledged throughout the country as a premier icon of high-end retailing shopping and fine dining. In old days of Shanghai, there were four great stores that first formed on Nanjing Road. The most famous of these stores were the Wing On Department Store, designed by American Elliot Hazard, including a soaring tower that served as a beacon to shoppers throughout the city. What a coincidence that the former owner, Koch Brothers, who had learned about Western-style retailing in Australia. The principal had absorbed in Australia included selling only high-quality goods, displayed openly and tastefully in well-decorated buildings. The Nanjing pedestrianized road was established in 1999 by adopting the concept from Pitt Street, Sydney. Today, Wingon Department Store still serves as a high-end retail store, but the owner has been changed. Shanghai Nightlife Today keeps the momentum going well into the night with some of the trendiest, most happening night spots in Asia. Bars seem to be everywhere. A night in Shanghai normally starts in a classic bar with soft drink or wines. Some bars will not be closed till sun comes.
Whether you're in Shanghai for architecture, cuisine, history, shopping, or entertainment, this is a town that's tailored just for you. The background jazz music called Evening Primrose, composed by a famous musician Li Jingguang during early 1940s, it is one of the theme songs of the romantic Shanghai soul. The south wind is blowing gently. The night gale is singing softly. The flowers under the moon are all dreaming. Only that evening primrose is revealing fragrance. Our crew is standing on the rooftop bar of the Fairmont Peace Hotel to video the panoramic view of the city. By six o'clock, all lights are up. The fabulous terrace bar there, where you will get a spectacular view of both banks, which is indeed magnificent. That reminds me that we escorted an electrician group to Las Vegas to learn the technology of illumination in early 2000. I have to say, those creative electricians have done a wonderful job. So, Shanghai mud. When it goes mad, it is Shanghai gold. The experience of the incandescent beauty of the Bund, and the cosmopolitan richness district, and also the sparkle lights reflection of the Huangpu River, will certainly impress you for lifelong memory. <laughs>